So let's linger on this social media thing. So if you you said if you ran Facebook for a day, let's 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 extend that. If you were to build a new so- social network today, how would you fix Twitter? How would you fix social media? If you want to answer a different question is if you were Elon Musk, somebody you know, and you were taking over Twitter, what would you fix? I've thought about this a little bit. Um, First of all, let me give you a backdrop. I wouldn't actually build a social media company at all. And the answer is, the the reasoning is the following. Um, I really tend to believe, as you've probably gotten a sense of sort of patterns and probabilities. And if you said to me, Chamath, probabilistically answer where, where are we going in apps and social experiences, what I would say is, Lex, we spent the first decade building platforms and getting them to scale. And if you want to think about it, again, back to sort of this poker analogy, others' mistakes minus your mistakes is the value. Well, the value that was captured was trillions of dollars, essentially to Apple and to Google. And they did that by basically... um, attracting billions of monthly active users to their platform. Then this next wave were the apps. Facebook, QQ, Tencent, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, that whole panoply of of apps. And interestingly, they were in many ways an atomized version of the platforms, Mm -hmm. right? They sat on top of them. They were an ecosystem participant, but the value they created was the same. Trillions of dollars of enterprise value, billions of monthly active users. Mm -hmm. Well, there's an interesting phenomenon that's kind of hiding in plain sight, which is that the next most obvious atomic unit are content creators. Now, let me give you two examples. Lex Friedman, this random crazy guy, uh, Mr. Beast, Mm -hmm. you know, Jimmy Donaldson, just the two of you alone, add add it up, Mm -hmm. okay, and you guys are going to approach in the next five years, a billion people. The only thing that you guys haven't figured out yet is how to capture trillions of dollars of value. Now, maybe you don't want to, and maybe that's not your state of mission. Right, right. But let's just look at Mr. Beast alone because he is trying to do exactly that probably. Yeah, and I think Jimmy is going to build an enormous business. But if you take Jimmy and all of the other content creators, right, you guys are atomizing what the apps have done. You're providing your own curated news feeds You're providing your own curated communities. You're allowed, you let people move in and out of these things in a very lightweight way and value is accruing to you. So the honest answer to your question is I would focus on the content creator side of things because I believe that's where the puck is going. That's a much more important shift in how we all consume information and content and are entertained. It's through brands like you, individual people that we can humanize and understand are the filter. But aren't you just arguing against the point you made earlier, which is what you would recommend is the invest in the AGI, the the deep personalization? No, what, because they 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 could still be a participant in that in that end state. If that happens, you have the option value of being an enabler of that, right? You can help improve what they do. Again, you can be this bare metal service provider where you can be a tax. Yeah. Right. You can participate in every thing that you do, every question that's asked, every comment that's curated, if you could have more intelligence as you provide a service to your fans and your audience, you would probably pay a small percentage of that revenue. I suspect all content creators would. And so it's that stack of services that is like a smart human being. It's like, you know, how do you help produce this information? You would pay a producer for that. I mean, maybe you would, but so back to your question. So what would I do? I think that you have to move into that world pretty aggressively. Um, I think that right now you first have to solve what is broken inside of these social networks. And I don't think it's a technical problem. So just to put it out there, I don't think it's, um, you know, it's one where there are these nefarious organizations that happens, brigading XYZ, that happens. But the real problem is a psychological one that we're dealing with, which is people through a whole set of situations have lost belief in themselves. And I think that that 
comes up as this very virulent form of rejection that they tried to put into these social networks. So if you look inside of comments on anything, like you could have a con like you could have a person that says on Twitter, I saved this dog from a fiery building, and there would be negative commenters. And you're like, well, again, put yourself in their shoes. What do you how do I steel man their case? I do this all the time. You know, I get people throw shade at me. I'm like, okay, let me steel man their point of view. And the best that I can come up with is, you know, I'm working really hard over here. I'm trying. I played by all the rules that were told to me. I've played well. I've played fairly. And I am not being rewarded in a system of value that you recognize. And that is making me mad. And now I need to cope and I need to vent. So back in the day, my dad used to drink. He would make me go get things to hit me with. Today, you go to Twitter, you spot off, you try to deal with the latent anger that you feel. So a social network has to be designed, in my opinion, to solve that psychological corner case because it is what makes a network unusable. To get real density, you have to find a way of moving away from that toxicity because it ruins a product experience. You could have the best pixels in the world, but if people are virulently spitting into their keyboards, other people are just going to say, you know what, I'm done with this. It doesn't make me feel good. So the social network has to have a social cost. You can do it in a couple of ways. One is where you have real world identity. So then there's a cost to being virulent and there's a cost to being caustic. A second way is to actually just overlay an economic framework so that there's a more pertinent economic value that you assign to basically spouting off. And the more you want to spend, the more you can say. And I think both have a lot of value. I don't know what the right answer is. I tend to like the latter. I think real world identity shuts down a lot of debate because there's still too much, um, you know, there's a sensation that, there, that there'll be some retribution. Um, so I think there's more free speech over air, but it cannot be costless because in that there's a level of toxicity that just makes these products unusable. What about a third option? And by the way, all of these can work together. If we look at this, what you call the corner case, which is hilarious, what I would call the human condition, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which, which is, uh, you know, that anger is rooted with the, the challenges of life. And what about having a um, an algorithm that shows you what you see that's personalized to you and helps you maximize your personal growth in the long term such that you're challenging yourself, you're improving, you're learning. There's just enough of criticism to uh, keep you on your toes, but just enough of like the dopamine rush to keep you uh, entertained and finding that balance for each individual person. You just described an AGI of a very empathetic, well-rounded friend. Yes, exactly. And and then you can throw that person, even anonymous, into a pool of discourse, 100%. and they would be better. I think you're absolutely right. And it's a very, very, very elegant way of stating it. You're absolutely right. But like you said, the AGI might be a few years away, so that's a huge investment. Like my concern, my gut feeling is this AG, thing we're calling AGI is actually not that diff difficult to build technically, but it requires a certain culture and it requires a certain certain risks to be taken. I think you could reductively boil down the human intellect into cognition and emotion. And you know, depending on who you are and depending on the moment, mm -hmm. they're weighted very differently, obviously. Um, cognition is so easily done by computers that we should assume that that's a solved problem. So our differentiation is the reasoning part. It's the emotional overlay. It's that it's the empathy. It's the ability to steel man the opposite person's case and and feel why that person, you know, you can forgive them without excusing what they did, as an example. Um that is a very difficult thing, I think, to capture in software. But I think it's a matter of when, not if.